Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is our year to shine and I totally forgot about Cheryl Richardson's Art of Extreme Self-Care Challenge for May. I was thinking, all right, I did my beginning of the month video, but then we're already on the sixth now, right? And I forgot, so I'm gonna read the self-care challenge for this uh, month number five of the year. I did a video on this last year. I, can, I joined it along with a topic that we were reading Sarah Bon Bronick's book, Simple Abundance, last year. And so this topic or this challenge had come to my mind at the time. And so I remember sharing with you some of it, but probably not as in-depth as I can this time. So it's called Take Your Hands Off the Wheel. And we did talk, oh, I know when I talked about this. It was when we were talking about asking for help and why is it so hard to accept help and you know there's so many people that would help you and so i remember that's what i brought this one into it might have been right around this time last year maybe um i know the windows were open yeah i think it was like early spring um so what is she talking about taking your hands off the wheel this is where you're gonna decide what are the things that you really need help with? And she tells us some stories about things that she thought of and ways that her husband tried to pitch in. She used to give him a list of things and he was totally on board with it because he knew that if he helped her that they would have a happier life together. In fact, Cheryl also shares a story. She calls it Sex and the Housekeeper. Uh, she shares a story of one of her clients who it was a male client and he was complaining that he and his wife just were not having much sex and she wanted he wanted to change that and so Cheryl talked about all the things that his wife was doing she was running around after the kids she was cleaning the house all this stuff and so she said why don't you get a housekeeper and he had all these excuses and she said well what if I told you that if you got a housekeeper you'd have more sex and so he thought I don't know, I guess I'll give it a try, you know, it was, he was motivated by it. And it actually worked because it took something off of his wife's plate. And back to her husband helping her, and I don't know if maybe this wife in question also might have had the same similar situation. Like say you have a certain way that you like things done, and then the helper person takes over that thing. Like Cheryl tells us for her, she has a certain way that she would load the dishwasher. And when her husband was helping her with her list of things that she was able to delegate, felt comfortable giving to someone else, she got frustrated because he was not doing it the way that she would do it, which I guess would quote unquote the right way, right? And so it, it, it brought up resentment between them though, because he said, I'm helping you. So why does it matter the 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 not the clothes the dishes are still getting clean why does it matter why do you have to control every little thing even the way that I'm helping you so there's more to this one than just letting people do stuff you also have to sort of let go of the way they're going to do it it might be different than the way you would choose to do it there are some parameters around it as well too Well, first of all, let me say these are the these are some clues that it's time for you to ask for help. These are the warning signs. When you hear yourself chronically complaining about how much you have to do, you feel like the weight of the world is resting squarely on your back. You fantasize about packing a bag and leaving for the nearest deserted island. You find yourself crying at unexpected times and in unexpected places, or you feel like you need a good cry. You start yelling at any objects or at drivers in front of you who are driving the speed limit. I'm just laughing because I could see myself doing that. You're so exhausted that the idea of brushing your teeth feels like too much work. Yeah, or like having sex. We ha this is the same sort of list that we had in the, um, the, the Lo I Love You book. What was it called? Madly in Love With Me, right? Because uh, that that author was telling us that 
there was a there was a list of things where it was like oh you you just if you never feel like you would uh, you know have have sex again or if you just can't even remember the things that you like to do if you even had the time so we've we've discussed this a bit and we've also discussed before the concept of letting go and again that's what I said about the dishwasher sort of thing you have to just let go not only of the way that the other person is going to do it but just letting go of having the control of everything and you do have to have a certain amount of trust in the people that you do take help from and and you have to sort of accept that it might it might not you know be the way that you would have done it like I said but these are the things that you want to you want to do in this challenge so how many items will you include on the list of things that you need help with where will you leave it so maybe if it's at home and you're delegating to your kids or something where are you gonna leave it when would you like to have these items completed what should your support person do when he or she can't meet that deadline and who will ultimately be in charge if additional help is needed okay so those are some important sort of parameters around the people that are helping you now again we talked about why it's so hard to ask for help last year it was that ask 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 video and so these are some things that some people might wrestle with for for thinking about the you know giving giving away something that they're doing one I don't want to appear weak it takes too much time and energy to explain what I need so I don't bother I hate being disappointed when people don't follow through it's too much of a hassle to fight with family members who resist helping I don't want to hear no I don't want to feel indebted to anybody when I'm at work I know I can do it faster and cheaper and better so I don't want to waste time and money in my family we were taught to be self-sufficient and I'm too proud to put anyone out so I have to tell you you know that I've not been feeling well and it was even just last weekend I'm doing much better now but last weekend I knew that I could not go grocery shopping now I did have people that said like let me know if you need anything but did I reach out to one of them no I probably should have but I decided for the first time to order my groceries online and it was sort of a I don't know it went okay but it didn't go perfectly but um, I have struggled with wanting to do that for for a long time and there's a lot of control around it because I think well they might not pick out the produce that I want like how ripe it is or uh, you know I might want to get something that is kind of complicated to describe or I want something from the deli and you know I guess it, I was able to do a lot of things I couldn't get some fruit like some prepared fruit like they have at the grocery store like in the um, fruit area there were a couple things I couldn't get um, also when you think about somebody delivering it I'm I just I'm like I don't want anybody knowing where I live I don't you know so I get sort of paranoid about things like that but so in this case I had to go pick it up but I've always when I think about this list I've always thought like how can you not go grocery shopping that is the that is not a difficult thing why would you pay somebody to go grocery shopping for you so that's my own issue but of course when I was really sick I thought well I'm justified but I do have to say I realized that even though I'm starting to feel better I can't go at the pace that I'm going we just talked about this in Brene Brown's book where she said she had to figure out how to manage everything and instead of like trying to change her life but she had to manage her anxiety first of all but she had to take some steps that really sort of helped with the anxiety so I think I thought about it and I think there's actually somebody that used to work for me who I was thinking like I would I would feel comfortable if it was someone that I knew that was gonna go shopping for me and then brought it to me because I you know I trust the person and you know I'd probably like set up a set up a like a prepaid um, credit card or something and so then they would just use that you know I you know how I am with my cash envelopes it would mess up my cash envelopes but I started to think about it and I thought you need to stop 
having resistance around it because quite literally sometimes there are times when just not even just physically but just because of all the things that I'm doing during the week where yeah it might be Saturday but I'm exhausted and I just want to rest so it would be nice to have somebody bring me uh, you know my groceries or like maybe that same day I could say you know bring me dinner from such and such a place or something I don't know it's something that I'm seriously considering and even I could do the online shopping again but I have so much resistance about it and I don't know you always see all the people in the store I guess it's the new way everybody's having people bring stuff to their house and everything I've never done the Grubhub and all that stuff either I just I don't like it, it's more that I'm just private about where I live and I don't want somebody being you know like oh there's no guy around and you know like I don't know I just get paranoid that somebody's gonna try to attack me or something um, I think I've gone through most of the things here so anyway that was just a little bit of something tying to my current situation that I've been thinking about then I, but I also was thinking, like, of course, I'm going to pay the person to do that. And I'm thinking, well, I could take that money and I could pay more of my debt down. But I said in another video, too, it's like, what if I'm, what if I'm a little bit longer out in paying things off, but in the meantime, I've made a better quality of life for myself. So it should be worth it, right? So you're going to pick an area of your life, be it home or work where you could use the most aid. Then choose the person or persons who you'd like to help and explain how the list works. Let this person know that you're ready to let go of control and you'd like his or her assistance. I don't have anybody at home so I can't ask a spouse and Annabelle doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, but I do think, and I mean, I, I would be more apt to be someone, like she mentioned the housekeeper, I'd be more apt to be like, well, I'd like to pay it forward and, and put my money for towards the person that's paying me and stuff rather than just having like a friend do it. Or I suppose you could have a situation in your life where say you wanted somebody to go grocery shopping for you and then they wanted you to do something else for them. And then so, I don't know, you guys swapped things almost like a barter. I don't know. You could think of that. But that's our extreme self challenge for stream self care wait. Extreme self care challenge. My brain is not totally functioning at hundred percent still. Uh, but that's our challenge for the month of May. Take your hands off the wheel. So be thinking about your list of things and thinking about some solutions and thinking about who might be able to help you. And maybe also identifying why it is so hard for you to take your hands off the wheel with that control and letting go. You can look back for that video from last year too. Thank you for being here. The next video will be on Francine J's The Joy of Less. We'll continue on. We're, we're going to be talking about the wardrobe next time and we have a few more rooms to go through. So thank you for being here and I will see you on the next video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.